Hey guys, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Today, I'm going to just quickly, you know, as paramedics, you hear a lot of um, references to things like a J wave or the Osborne wave and other things too, like Delta waves and, and um, you know, things like that. And, you know, as providers, a lot of times we blow them off as being sort of that nice to know um, add on to reading EKGs, right? Now, it is sort of nice to know what it is. It's not a lot uh, that we're going to do as far as treatment goes for the wave itself, right? But understanding where you can see it and what types of uh, patients you might see it in, you can be able to recognize that it's there and also uh, sort of have an idea as to some other issues that might occur with this type of um, uh, wave that you might see on the EKG. So real quick, it's also, again, the Osborne wave, right? Uh, you might have even heard things like uh, it's a late delta wave or uh, even a hypothermic wave because a lot of times this is where you're going to see the J wave is in the hypothermic patient. The thing is to remember that not all hypothermic patients are going to actually have this wave, um, but it is one of those things that you will see and has been seen um, more commonly in a hypothermic patient. Um, it, what it is actually is a positive deflection that happens at the junction right between the QRS complex and your ST segment, really like after, right, right after the, the, the R wave, uh, you're going to see it. Um, so what we're looking at, though, is where you're going to see that, right? Normally, you might see 2-3 AVF and, and also V5, V6. However, um, when checking out some of the, the information on this J-Wave, uh, I also saw it um, also commonly seen in V3 and V4 as well. So keep in mind that, you know, I think this is one of those things where they don't have a concrete... Uh, idea where you might see it, but more most commonly it's going to be two three AVF and V three through uh, V six, um, and again you're going to see it a lot of times in those hypothermic patients, patients that have the, the high uh, ca calcium, the hyperglyce hypercalcemia, uh, brain injury patients, and I was also mentioned about seeing it in V fib. Now you're not going to see it in V fib, right? Because V fib is you're not going to see a, a J wave going on. But what what does happen is there has been some uh, research done where you might have a otherwise healthy person, especially athlete, younger athletes, where they might have a J wave, and uh, that ends up actually progressing to where they end up being cardiac arrest. Now whether whether that's because of the J wave itself or something else going on, uh, they had do have some cases going on where they've recognized that the J wave was present in these individuals. Uh, leading up to them being in cardiac arrest. So, you know, again, I don't think the J-Wave was causing it, but it is sort of, I guess, a, a cardio uh, EKG sign um, that in an otherwise healthy person that maybe something else is going on that they're not really seeing, right? So I think that's why they probably mentioned the V-Fib issue when it comes to where you would see the J wave. It's not really in the V fib, but right before it, before the patient will go into V fib. Now, I got a couple of pictures here just to sort of give you an idea what it looks like. This is the uh, probably the best picture I've got. Again, V5, right? Um, and right here again, guys, okay? You can see this little wave going on here. This is a clear picture of this. I got this off of actually Wikipedia, okay? A lot of times too, you're going to see these, uh, the rhythms you're going to see with these are, are um, AFib. Uh, sometimes it might even be a bradycardic rhythm. It's going to depend upon the patient. Uh, things like hypothermia patients, you might have a longer QT interval uh, you might see as well as the AFib going on. So all that stuff keeps in mind. So again, the, the J wave is, isn't the underlying rhythm, right? It's just another sort of thing to look for uh, on the EKG especially if you're suspecting a patient that, that, you know, that's in, that is hypothermic or you're suspecting a patient that does have uh, hypercalcemia, right? Take a look and see if you see that J-wave there.
Another quick picture here, and this is referencing to uh, ST elevation when it comes to the J-Wave, okay? Again, I got some V5 uh, shots here and show the J-Wave without the ST elevation. And you can pretty much pretty clearly see it here, right? Pretty clear you can see that here without ST elevation. Now here is what they call a, a slur. Um, you can't really see it all too much. I mean, they're showing it here. If you look really close here, you might be able to kind of make it out. And then the J-Wave with the slur here on the bottom, you can make it out here. Here, not so much on the AVF, but here on the V5, you can see it. This is with ST elevation. Now, the next one here, uh, again, now this here shows it V3 and V4. Pretty easy to see it there. And probably if you look close enough here in V5 and V6, you can pretty much almost make it out right here as well. Okay. Um, so just as a way to sort of look at that, and even if you look at your 2, 3, and AVF as well, you probably can make out the J wave more here in 3, I believe, and the AVF. You probably can make out that J wave. But... Is more prominent here in V3 and V4. So, what are our treatments for the J-Wave? Well, again, we're not, be, we're not going to be treating the J-Wave itself, right? We're going to be treating those underlying causes. Hypothermic patients, the high calcemia patients, brain injury patients. Um, we're going to be treating those underlying causes for what's going on with the patient, okay? Because more than likely, you're going to have not just the J-Wave going on. You're going to be having that bradycardia. You're going to be having the AFib. Um, you know, ST elevations like we just saw, and those are the things we're going to be treating. And if you go online and actually look at some of the other samples of J-Waves on EKGs and other websites, they actually have some pretty cool pictures of the J-Wave in a hypothermic patient that show after one day it lessening, and then after a week, the J-Wave is totally gone. So pretty cool to kind of see that sort of evolution of how uh, that can be corrected. So again, our treatment, we're not going to see a J-Wave on a monitor and go, oh my God, we have to treat the J-Wave, right? We're going to be treating the underlying causes of what is going on with the patient, okay? And we're not treating that J-Wave. We're going to be treating, again, that hypothermia, the high calcium. Those are the things that we're going to be thinking about treating the patient for and relaying those issues to the hospital. Our report's not going to be, hey, I got a patient with a J-Wave, right? It's going to be more along the lines of what really is going on with the patient. But So, again, this is it really is that nice-to-know thing. We're not going to really be treating the J-Wave, but it's good to recognize what that is because if you get a, a kind of an EKG and it's a little little screwy going on and you see so that extra wave happening there now you know that it's the j wave and maybe you can figure out why they're actually having that why that's there okay are they hypothermic are they uh have some type of a brain injury are they hype hypercalcemic so all those things that look in guys just another little clue here to try to help you with your assessment your clinical um evaluation of patients and in your documentation and how you relay your report to the doctor. Guys, I hope you can use these Monday minutes. Uh, if you have some minutes of your own, send them over to me. It's Jay Hoffman at ems-safety.com. Be more than happy to include some minutes that you have and want to see here on the weekly video cast. So until next week, guys, as always, Jim Hoffman from EMS Office Hours, stay safe.